Welcome to everyone that's joining us online today. Can you believe it's already our first Wednesday into our 21-day lockdown? It has, it has truly been amazing also being able to connect online, and it really just shows us how social media and various online platforms enable community, even though we're not in proximity to one another. And in actual fact, on that note, we're going to be starting out today with our Wednesday services, which is Bound Together in Love and Sacrifice. And it's amazing that we can all be bound together, even though we're not in one place. And so as we go into today's service, not forgetting that it's also COVID-19, um, and we also want to have a bit of humor that's happening around us. And so I just want to encourage you that if you're online and you've got a joke that you would love to share, seeing that it's the 1st of April, April's Fool's Day, please do share your joke, and let's see who's got the best joke. Keep it clean and church-like. <laughs> Let us pray together as we continue in worship together. And so, loving God, we thank you, Lord, for a cord that cannot be broken by anything. We thank you, God, that you bind us together in a way, God, that stretches, Lord, even when we find ourselves in different spaces, Lord. We thank you, God, that your court that binds us together is, is not a small restricting cord that is only enabled by us being in close proximity to one another, God. But from wherever we are, we know that we are together in worship. And so as we worship you from different spaces, Lord, of the world, of South Africa, of Joburg, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you guide us. And that as we bind together, that we may find that sense of community all in you, Lord Jesus Christ. In your name we pray. Amen. There's no love on my soul. Oh, oh my soul. Worship his home. Sing like never before on my soul. I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing. Your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. So bless the Lord, oh my soul. Has come 
Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore Bless the Lord, oh my soul His only name Sin like never before On my soul I worship your holy name Yes, I worship your holy name Yes, I worship your holy name And so let us continue as we pray together. Lord God, we want to thank you that we can worship your holy name. And God, as we continue in our Lenten journey, we thank you, Lord, that you bind us together with love. And so may our hearts resonate with that fire today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, as we gather around our Lenten theme today, we focus on what it means to be bound together in love and sacrifice. I'm going to just recap a little bit about what our, what our themes have been over the last couple of weeks. We know now this week we move really close to Jesus' passion and we know his death approaches. And the great themes that we have focused on in the previous weeks have been the mystery and the holiness of God where we where we walked near the fire on holy ground. We've looked at how God's absence and God's presence helps us understand relationships of, and what it means to be human and how we understand the joys and sorrows. Last week I spoke to you about how we lament in seasons like this. And today we look again at how we are bound together with love. Holy Week is drawing close. For us, a new season is very much underway. We, we watch nature around us, busy shifting and changing. It's becoming so much colder. I remember when we started our Lenten journey, it was during Ash Wednesday. We had an early service, and it wasn't that chilly, and yet it's becoming so cold. So we know the season's are changing. Our world has changed dramatically. And we are waiting expectantly for Palm Sunday. And as we do that today, we draw ourselves to a story in the Old Testament, in Genesis chapter 22. And I'm reading to you from the first 18 verses. Abraham is tested. Genesis chapter 22 from 1 to 18. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. And he said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there, as a burnt offering on a mountain that I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and he loaded his donkey. He took with him two of the servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and he saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and he placed it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife. And as the two of them went on together, 
Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and he arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and he laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and he took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Thanks be to God for his word. I think this is one of those passages that shifts the condition of our souls. And we find it incredibly difficult to, to understand this passage. And I want us to focus today on, on one particular word. I want us to focus on the word love. We, we see in the text how God calls out to Abraham. And we see throughout this passage, there is this call of God in a very intimate way with the people of God. And perhaps it's been a journey for you as you're beginning to experience almost a week now of lockdown here in our context in South Africa. It's in, on other days across the world. But, but as we experience this, this space of being locked away from the rest of the world. Many of us have taken this opportunity to focus in on our souls. And when we focus in that space, we, we start to resonate with how deeply personal we are. And we see this passage. We see God interacting with the people of God. We see a God speaking personally, calling Abraham by name, giving Abraham, a command, an instruction. We see Abraham in his preparation, dealing with God intimately, listening and knowing where God has directed him to go. We hear God calling him to frame his understanding of love. He, he calls Abraham to sacrifice his son, but he doesn't just call Abraham to sacrifice his son. He says, the son whom you love. When we look at the passages of Scripture, we see that it is actually in this particular passage that we see love for the first time. And so what is this love that we encounter in this last week of our Lenten journey? We know that the conclusion of the story is not the sacrifice of Isaac. And so we kind of exhale because we know it doesn't end with his sacrifice. So I want us to, to focus on, on this call of love. What is this call of love? What is the nature of love? And how are we to love? It's really interesting that God calls Abraham to love his son and yet to sacrifice his son. What is it that we are called to love? And how does love and sacrifice interplay with one another? We are fraught with all sorts of challenges when we read this passage. It's almost as if we are desperately waiting for the good ending, that the sacrifice will not be Isaac. And so we wait for God to redeem because our human nature deeply knows that the God we worship is a God of love that always redeems. And yet in front of us, we know in just a few days' time, we will be confronted on on. Good Friday with a cross, which is a symbol of sacrifice and of death. And we will know that Jesus was sacrificed. And so how then, God, do we come face to face with what it means to love and to sacrifice? So I want to ask you today, how do you define love? There is evidence in the scripture that love is the essence of who we are. 
and we explain our love in the way we live. We, we explain our love in the things that we do. Love is employed in the Gospels and particularly in the Gospel of John. And if you are journeying with us, one of the things that we're doing right throughout our 21-day lockdown in South Africa is from day one, the 27th of, of March, right through to the end of our current lockdown, we're going to be reading a chapter of John's Gospel every single day. And, and if you've been doing that, you will already notice that the language in John's Gospel is a language of love and not just of sacrifice, that, that there is this redeeming presence of Jesus' love right from the beginning. It's almost as if the Gospel message is, is shrouded in the truth of love. And so perhaps today, we need to pause and kind of take stock on what is the measure of our love. I want to read to you just a couple of reflections. We know the passage in Corinthians that displays for us the most exquisite image of love in action. It is kind. It is not envious. It is not boastful. It is not arrogant. It is not rude. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices in the truth. It bears all things and it hopes all things. So somehow as we prepare ourselves, even for the entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, we prepare ourselves as we find how does love ache through our actions, through our thinking, through our imagination. To fall in love St. Augustine of Hippo said, with God is the greatest romance of all. And so perhaps that's really the call in our last Lenten journey this week, is have we, as we've searched God for our hearts to be on fire, have we in fact fallen in love with God? St. Augustine of Hippo said, it is the greatest adventure to find him. It is the greatest human achievement to fall in love with God. The measure of love is to love without measure. And perhaps our time in this journey is, can we say that the measure of love we have is love without measure? Have we made love an infinite possibility in our lives? In order to discover the character of people, we have only to observe what they love. St. Augustine of Hippo, an ancient theologian, says that the measure of our character is seen in how we love. How have you loved, even in this time while you've been in your own lockdown? How have you loved those around you? How have you reached out? Love takes off masks that we fear we cannot live without and know that we cannot live within. James Baldwin says, love removes the masks that we fear we cannot live without and know we cannot live within. The day we stop burning with love, people will die of the cold. So it doesn't matter if we've been locked away. Our love has not been locked away. Our passion, our hearts that are called to burn with a fervent desire of, of extending love and grace to the world has not been shut away. And so as we conclude our weekly sessions and as we prepare ourselves for Sunday and then Holy Week, today we take stock of love, of how we love, of what we love and of who we love. I want to read to you just a, a poem that was written about how Jesus loved us from the cross. I want you to imagine the scene of Good Friday. See as they strip the robe from off his back and they spread his arms and nail them to the cross. The dark nails pierce him and the sky turns black. 
and love is firmly fastened onto loss. But here, a pure change happens on this tree. Loss becomes gain. Death opens into birth. Here, wounding heals and fastening makes free. Earth breathes in heaven, and heaven roots itself in earth. And here we see the length, the breadth, and the height, where love and hatred meet, and love stays true. Where sin meets grace and darkness turns to light, we see what love can bear and be and do. And here our Savior calls us to his side. His love is free. His arms are wide. And as Malcolm Guilt offers us the sonnet, an explanation of love, we really sit with this challenge. Is the love that we live wide enough? To root heaven on earth and breathe heaven into our souls. Will we love without measure as we prepare ourselves for the Holy Week? Let us pray. Lord God, it is our heart's desire that we would fall in love with you, God. There are so many things that we long for. But the truth is we really do long for love. We long to love you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We want a fire in our being that doesn't pretend but truly is. And so burn us with the presence of your Holy Spirit wherever we might be, that somehow as we find ourselves at the point of Palm Sunday, and as we enter Holy Week, that we will be changed because there will be an all-consuming, immeasurable love that spews from our mind, our hearts, our souls, our actions, and our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to conclude our time now as we spend a little bit of time in worship. of lightning, rolls of thunder, blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be.
with all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. God, that is our heart's cry that we would be filled with such a wonder that the only thing we could say is that we adore you so completely. And so now may your grace hold us, may your love inspire us and set us free and may the presence of your Holy Spirit bring us to a place of deep, deep love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll see you again soon.